Now, clarification number three is do not fight in order to be justified before God, but fight as a justified sinner. Or, as I like to say, learn the secret of gutsy guilt. I hope all of you know the secret of gutsy guilt. I, I, I suppose that in this crowd, I don't need to say too much about the doctrine of justification, but I want to anyway. Um, I'll say something. The fight for joy is not the foundation of your acceptance with God. The foundation of your acceptance with God is Jesus Christ, his blood and righteousness. His living, his dying, his rising from the dead did everything to make you wholly acceptable to God and you have that purchase by faith alone, apart from works of the law and apart from a fight for joy. It is a falling on Jesus, not a fight. Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. So this we know, everything the law demanded of me, I have failed to perform as I should, and therefore I'm under the curse of the law, which is damnation. I am therefore lost. All the people in the world are in this condition apart from Christ. And Christ then, it says, became a curse for us. Romans 8, 32. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not with him freely give us all things? So you have not only the curse removed, you have a commitment, a covenant blood-bought commitment that everything good for you for eternity has been bought for you and will be given to you. The curse is gone, the guilt is gone, the sin is gone, and every blessing in the heavenly places is purchased, it is finished. And to enjoy that position with God as totally acceptable, all of his anger removed, replaced with total mercy, blessing me forever with everything that will make me happy in eternity, the way you get in on that is faith alone. Galatians 3 28, we hold that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Faith alone. Therefore, the sins that you fight in your fight for joy, the joylessness that you fight is a forgiven joylessness. The only sin that you can defeat is a defeated sin. The only sin which is prompted by finding your pleasure somewhere other than in God that you can defeat, the only way to defeat it is to see it as a punished sin, a covered sin. This is the mystery of the Christian life, fighting as a justified sinner. My sins, all of them that I hate, were covered by Jesus. Therefore, when I make war on them, I know they are already defeated, covered, punished. And those are the only ones I can get any victory over. If I turn this around, and begin to think, now, there's some sins, and I'm going to attack them and defeat them so that God will accept me. You're dead. Dead in the water. 
There's only hope if we get the order of justification and sanctification right and do not mingle the two, which is the great Roman Catholic error, the mingling of sanctification and justification, getting right with God on the basis of Christ alone, by grace alone, through faith alone alone, to the glory of God alone, learned about from the Bible alone, is biblical truth. And then, when you're standing right with God by faith alone, you make war on sin. That's the fruit and evidence that you are right with God. It's not the way you get right with God. It's the fruit and evidence. A person who is cavalier about their sin sees no problem with living in sin because they're saved by grace isn't. At least we have no biblical warrant for saying they are. There may be a season of backsliding, so we mustn't judge too quickly. But a person who goes on treating the sin in their own life in a cavalier, nonchalant way, using grace as license, has not understood what it is to be born from above because a new person comes into being 